I'm Amy Lush, and I'm outside the Hub Culture Davos Pavilion. Outside the Ice House, in fact. Really pleased to be joined by one of our partners, David Schreier. Thanks very much for coming along. Thank you, Edie. It's always great to talk to you, and especially on a gorgeous day like today after all this snow that we've had. Exactly. So you're the founder and CEO of Distilled Analytics, and you want you are interested in something called behavioral biometrics. Now, what is that? So great. Thank you. Uh, for the question, so Distilled Analytics is transforming financial services with behavioral analytics. One application of behavioral analytics is an area known as behavioral biometrics. Essentially, the way that we pass through life, the way that we use our mobile phone, things that we do naturally, these devices around us can pick up and they form a unique signature of us. Mm -hmm. And so that's behavioral biometrics, the unique signature of us. So the angle at which I hold my cell phone when I punch mm -hmm. in my pin code, that is unique to me and very, very hard to forge. Hmm. That's, so why does it matter? What are we going to use it for? So as we discussed last year, we have uh, what I term now an identity crisis. Mm -hmm. There are 1.1 billion people in the world who don't even have an identity in the eyes of governments. Uh, they're abused, they're exploited, there are many refugees. In developed worlds, there are many people who are uh, very law-abiding citizens who get confused with bad actors because our existing systems for identifying people are terrible. The, mm -hmm. the password or even the fingerprint scanner are not very good ways of identifying you as you. There's a very low match rate, there's like mm -hmm. a 2% match rate, and there's a very high false positive rate. There's like mm -hmm. an 80% false positive rate. Just from fingerprints? Just from any of these sort of conventional methods okay. of, of identify, identifying, mm -hmm. authenticating, validating. So the fingerprint scanner on the iPhone mm -hmm. was hacked within 24 hours of its release right. by someone taking a high-res photo of the security researcher's finger mm -hmm. as they were demonstrating the iPhone phone and 3D printing a little mold to put over their finger. So this stuff right. is not secure. Mm. We have to fix the cybersecurity crisis and the identity crisis and behavioral biometrics is part of the solution. So now, just in our ordinary use of our devices, we are able to very uniquely, with better than 99% match rate, know that you're you and I'm me and someone can't forge that. And the error rate is less than 1%. So we go from a 2% match rate and an 80% error rate to a 99% match rate and a less than 1% error rate. So three orders of magnitude better. Can you already do it or do you need devices and cases and that kind of thing to develop as well? So 92% of young people in the US, as one example of many, mm -hmm. have smartphones. There are over 500 million smartphones that will be in Africa fully deployed within three years. So smartphones are everywhere. The ordinary humble smartphone can do this behavioral biometrics. So what's next? Now, we need to deploy it. Banks are grappling with this problem of identity. It costs almost 20% of all of the spending to run a bank just for AML, anti-money laundering, and KYC, know your customer. That's an identity problem. So we can help lower costs for banks and improve service for customers. David, thank you very much for stopping by. My little thank corner you, here outside the Hub Culture Ice House, and I'm Edie Lush.